today we don't produce anything mm. we don't produce toothpick we don't produce the sticks of matches mm. so you 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 i mean uh, in niger they just made a decision france you are going to buy our product with a market price mm. it's no longer going to be discounted and it's going to happen now Thank you very much. Um, the ANC got it wrong when it stopped industrializing. Remember the Bantu stands, typical Bantu stands who had no idea what was happening in the world. Mm. But every big township of the Bantu stands had factories. Yeah. They were producing things for themselves. I come from Sishio. When we were growing up, we used to see people coming back from work by food. Mm. Because in the morning, we won't see them. We were still sleeping. But in the afternoon, then it later made sense. They are working in the factories. They are producing clothes locally. Mm. And we expect to grow our economy. Mm. We have to, the ANC should have, from 1994, turned around the education, mm -hmm. not RDPs. We should have made education free of charge because the situation we find ourselves in now was deliberately created through education for women they were told you can't get educated because if you go to school, you won't get married. And then for men who had an opportunity to go to school, Fervood said, what is an African child going to do with mathematics? Yeah. He was saying, mathematics is for higher jobs and the higher jobs are reserved. Yeah. Therefore, even if you have mathematics, you won't make it. So we should have given people free and compulsory education. Mm that every child must go to school and if that child is still very young the parents must take the responsibility to make sure these children go to school skill them mm. then from there industrialize and beneficiate mm. when you take raw chrome out of south africa i can guarantee you now you are creating jobs where it is going to be processed yeah. because it must be converted into steel and that process it gets it is labor intensive Mm. And that's why the Chinese take our chrome as is. So we take our raw material. If you take out a diamond, yeah. uh, it has to be polished, it has to be cut, and it has to be processed into a finished goods, yeah. which Yo we can do ourselves if we own our own minerals. So you don't need anything. You need a political will, mm. a determination. But the problem is that you've got a group of old men and women who are compromised from Kodesa. We don't know what the Oppenheimer family discussed with them when they went into exile. They said to them, we are going to end apartheid. You are going to come back and rule South Africa and it is going to be business as usual. Meaning you don't tamper with business. You can do those things of yours of politics. Where we are working, you won't do that. They agreed to it. We just know the, the issues that are above, we don't have the minute detail of what really transpired because why would a person be scared to remove a statue of Kruka? You don't, you really don't know you were in the ANC, you really don't? We raised it there. Mm. You see, the good thing with me is that you can never put it uh, uh, to me that you're saying it now. Mm. You can go back to my videos and I like these social media guys. They go and re bring you back know, the old, archives. Old, yeah, yeah. old videos. Yeah. I raised everything I'm talking about now. I raised it in the ANC. Mm. In the conference where I was re-elected president of the Youth League 2011, all these issues I'm raising are resolution, official resolutions mm. of the ANC Youth League. Nationalization of the Reserve Bank, nationalization of mines, establishment of state bank, free quality, decolonized education, all of that. Mm. I raised it in the ANC. You go to FNB and listen to me speaking, Zuma sitting at the back and everybody else at Johannesburg Stadium with President Mandela being there, me speaking. I raised all of these issues. I, and I was, I was not leading yes. a political party. I was not asking for votes. Yes. I was just raising these matters as matters of principle. So, the point I'm making is, if you have not been compromised, mm -hmm. why would we be scared? Leave the economy and everything. A statue of a murderer. Every town in the whole of South Africa, small or big, mm -hmm. 
has got a statue honoring apartheid generals. Mm. And you, you, Mugabe said, you can't tell me about South Africans. I even scared to hit a statue of a white person. That's how much we are so compromised. So we need a new generation, which is not part yeah. of those commitments. We don't owe Cortez anything. Mm -hmm. We don't know what these guys discussed. They've had their 30 years to deliver on the product. We're a new generation with new challenges. And we cannot dare to Cortez Aminez, which we don't have. Your point is exactly that, that you've been raising these things for over some time. Yeah. You're not the only person. Many people have been asking these questions. Yeah. We know that the private sector sits with billions that yeah. they don't want to Absolutely. spend. We know that this economy sits with only what one kind of a people in this country, the minority, the white people, mm -hmm. and that's not transforming. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to get that to change? Let's develop, let's get our own capital. Let's generate our own capital. The white capital has kept uh, liquid cash in the banks and is unable is refusing not unable refusing yes. to invest it back into our economy because of pure racist reason that they do not trust black men and that they can't put their money in a country where they've got no guarantee so rather liquid cash because if anything happens you just press transfer but you can't transfer a building you can't transfer an infrastructural development. So the rest will rather not entertain. I'm still to see very few white guys, maybe Carl Niels is one of them, who have no dual citizenship. Every white person that you know who's at that level, they've got South African uh, uh, passport and they've got a British passport or a German passport. Because they don't want... They, they, they are, they, they are not here. They are here physically because they are milking us, but they are somewhere else. So we need to create our own money. Mm. That's why we must own the state bank. You know, civil servants, this bank must give them bonds. They don't mm. qualify many of them to get bonds. A teacher who taught me geography 15 years ago bought a Corolla. It was so beautiful and new and we, Toyota Corolla was so excited. Met him this year, still driving the same car because he cannot afford mm. to get a car. Mm. Despite the fact that he's a teacher, we grew up teachers being the most respected, respected people. Mm. The bank is refusing to give him with all the years in teaching in the, as a civil servant and all of that, he doesn't qualify for a new latest version of Corolla. This state bank must come in. They say, where are you going to get the money because you need 250 million as a guarantee? Then I said to them, no, Reserve Bank owns shares in African Bank. Why does the regulator get involved in the banks? The Reserve Bank must pull out. We take that money, that is our share, and then we build our own state-owned bank, or we put more money and buy everybody out and we buy net bank and convert it into a state bank. Mr. Malimale, I did promise that I'll take calls. Let me oh. take a question quickly from <laughs> LG, uh, who's calling from Lindhurst. LG, thanks for calling. Good evening. Yes, good evening. I only have two uh, small Ayana questions to my president. Go ahead. Good evening, president. My brother, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to check, man. Uh, seeing that EFF is very, you know, they are very, uh, they, they, they've got vision, they are visionary, they are a visionary party. What are the changes that, changes that South Africa will actually build, you know, their very first car under EFF government? And then uh, the other things that uh, I just wanted to check with you, how is it that EFF is very much, you know, uh, it's, it's able to make sure that after rallies, every other person is transported back home and other political parties, especially the, the ANC, cannot do the same. How is it, how, 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 how is it that EFF can flawlessly do that without, you know, having to read about people being left at the stadium and sleeping under, under bridges after rallies? LG, is that is that is that the only question? The only two questions? Yeah, those are the only right. two questions that I, I had in mind. Thanks very much for calling. I thought the line was dying on us, Mr. Malema. Th thank you very much. I think he raised a very important point. We we don't manufacture a car, yes. but we manufacture um, a fighter jet. Mm. 
how can we make the machines to fly and be unable to produce machines that are mobile on the road? Mm. It's a deliberate decision and it is those, uh, you know, every time a president travels, you see him sitting here and the other president sitting here, they sign some documents that that's where they are signing that, no, you won't do those things of cars. We are going to send German cars to you. And because you want to create jobs, you will assemble them there. You don't have to produce. So we are assembling yes. German vehicles in South Africa. So we have no reason not to produce a car. Mm. Denel, if it can produce a fighter jet, a car is nothing. It needs a political will. We transport people back. We bring people into our stadiums and then we transport them back because firstly, they are people. They have to be treated with respect. When the elderly gets into an EFF bus, the young ones must stand up and give the old ones the seat. Even the same in the stadiums, they're given preference. And outside the stadium, we create a tent called Lost and Found, where items are sent and people who miss their transport also go there. It's a rule in the EFF that the Secretary General doesn't leave the stadium until the last person has left. So they all go to the lost and found. There is what we call venue operating center. There are cameras everywhere. They check everybody. The leg is clear. Then we establish a taxi rank of not less than 100 taxis on site, which deals with uh, lost and found and people who, uh, who miss their transport. We take them from the stadium straight into their homes. And the instruction is very clear to the drivers. If it's a female, you must make sure that she's safe. And he says, how do I know he's safe? We say, once the light goes on, you know she's inside the house, then you can drive. That's how much we treat our supporters and members with respect. And it pains me that a 10-year organization can do that. An organization with more than a century still can master the simplest thing as transporting people because they treat them as voting kettles. Yeah. We have to look at what are the conditions of our domestic workers. They make us to be what we are. Mm. But they are not properly uh, paid. And uh, you look at the farm workers. Mm. Without them, we can't eat the food we are eating. And the farmers become more rich and rich and they exploit the workers. Mm. So what we look at is what could be a reasonable figure. Mm. And that is not like the maximum, that is minimum wage means the entrance level. And all of, remember, when we increase for domestic workers, mm. it means your salary as well must go up. And therefore, we cannot paralyze you. People say, no, but where am I going to get this money? This is what I'm earning as the employer of this domestic work. We say, once we push the lower ones up, you guys are also going to get the notch. And then we will be able to support uh, our our domestic workers. I think we've got uh, the minimum wage now in South Africa sitting at 3.5. Yes. And uh, that was almost maybe five years ago mm -hmm. because that we spoke about in 2019 mm -hmm. in Parliament. So it can be 3.5 even now. There should be some difference which uh, explain that the cost of living is too high and uh, it's important that we try to meet the mafia. So part of what I think South Africa's problem is, is not lack of resources mm -hmm. or money. Mm -hmm. We know we've got resources, we've got minerals and so mm. on. We actually also have people with skills. Yes, absolutely. And we do have the money. Mm -hmm. So I think part of our problem is managing our coffers. So in your view, you would have to restructure how we are managing or what do you think would have to happen? Because the money is there, but we're certainly not seeing it do what it's supposed to do. In your view, apart from some of the policies that you've given us, what would have to change in how we're managing the money that we have? We're wasting money, yeah. a lot of it. There's something called deputy ministers. You, you don't know them. Hmm. No one knows them. They don't, we don't know what they are they doing. Even when a minister goes overseas, mm. the deputy minister is not allowed to act. He's not a member of cabinet. Mm. Paid a lot of money, houses, cars, Pretoria, Cape Town. That's a waste of money. But equally, why do you need provincial premiers? Why do you need MECs? Mm. Why do you need provincial legislatures? Because 
the Limpopo legislature, I don't know, the day they meet, it becomes, you know, a Christmas. They, everybody has to know they are going to meet. But in parliament, we meet every day. Mm. Legislatures don't meet every day. They meet that day, yet they get paid a lot of money. MECs, premiers. Now, you don't need these provinces. For what? We need to build a unitary state. From the provincial monies alone, we'll be able to save a lot of resources. And someone says, so what are we going to do with these workers? They will still have their roles there, but they will be redefined. And those that do not add value because they were cadre deployment, which there's nothing wrong with the cadre mm -hmm. deployment, by the way. But the problem with the ANC cadre deployment is qualification. It doesn't consider qualifications. It considers logineering, who can sing the loudest. So you, I supported you to be a mayor. You're going to make me head of technical services. But my qualification is a history teacher. That's why you've got a problem of sewer. When you have a blockage of sewer everywhere, don't make noise. Just go and check who is the head of technical services here. In the, the person has got no qualification. It's a member of SATU. They are comrades. They sing together. They employ each other. So cater deployment must be on merits mm -hmm. and must be on the basis that, yes, we prefer you, but you must go and compete. I mean, I get, I, I participate in hiring of judges and I get yes. there with a name in my mind like, yo, I just like this guy. Like, mm -hmm. this is the one. Mm -hmm. uh, in the interviews, it just becomes pop, 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 pop. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer part of those things. I came with it, but you must still perform. I'm not married to the name. I'm married to quality. And people must be hired according to merit. So there are so many areas mm -hmm. where we can maximize in terms of resources. But mm -hmm. the biggest problem is corruption, mm -hmm. which is not punishable. Mm -hmm. Because you can steal the money anyhow you want. It doesn't matter. Gwede Mantashi agreed that Busasa installed cameras. He didn't say, he didn't deny it. Um, Nomvula agreed that he ate chickens every December. Bosasa was sending the chickens that are supposed to go to Lindela and prisons were going to Nomvula's house. She ate those chickens. She didn't deny. Taba Makweta said, I'm waiting for the invoice. For, for too long waiting for invoice, like how is the email not working? He says the services provided, I was going to pay, I was waiting for invoice. Pure lies. You've got this classical example of people who said, yes, I know what you're talking about. But he doesn't charge them. They don't get arrested. There's not even a threat that they will be arrested. So how are you going to stop corruption? Mm -hmm. Enter any government building. And Floyd makes this point with ease. He says, you know, when you enter government buildings, for a second you'll even think there are no adults in this building. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? He says, a ceiling is falling. Mm -hmm. And an adult is working under that falling ceiling. An adult sees nothing wrong with that. Only children, when a ceiling is falling, they can attend to it. Why would elderly people behave in a manner uh, our people are behaving? So it's, 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 it's one of those things that we have a responsibility when we take over to instill a different culture. I'll take more calls. Uh, Dollo is calling from Pretoria. Good evening and welcome, Dollo. Yeah. Uh, I just have two questions I'd like to ask. Mm, go ahead. Uh, CSC? I just want to know. Uh, ah, Dolo's gone. Okay. <laughs> Snega is in Kahiso. I'm sure he'll call back. Snega, hi. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for calling. Okay, number one. Hey, CIC, how are you? Ronald Guy. Good. Last time when you were here, I posed a question to you. I said to you, yeah. um, EFF with the numbers that they have, they've got over one million membership, right? Yes. There's a possibility of them demonstrating something. Even your bank that can be owned by EFF members. Your, your response was, you were still busy with uh, registering and stuff. That was about two years ago. Mm. I'm, I still want to know. You want to go into government and demonstrate economic freedom. 
why don't you use the membership that we have to demonstrate what you can do when, you, when you're in government? That's number one. Number two, I need to make you aware of this. In Mohaliti, to where you are part of the government, yes, there's a storm brewing there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, go and check the video of the guy who made a video in Mohali City. Uh, Sega delivery is very poor. You are part of the government there. And I would make a request to say, go to Mohali City, go and check what is happening, then rescue the government that you are part of. Thank you. Thank you, Snega. Well, in Mohali City, we've got a, a very committed uh, uh, fighters in the municipality who are the executive and the, the leadership there. If you go into their department, because you remember, in a coalition of some sort, mm. each political party has assigned its own department. Mm-hmm. If you go into our department, mm. we even go overboard. Mm. We go into what they call informal settlements, they neglect them. We will go and open roads there, mm. even if they are not our roads, but at least some sort of access roads so that we go back to negotiate with Texas to take our people in there. Everywhere else where we see a pothole as the EFF in that municipality, we take it upon ourselves to make sure that those potholes are patched because we believe that we must not be a part of a complaining people who are in government in Moali City. Although we don't control the majority, whatever responsibility we are assigned to, we execute it to the best of our ability. And I, I take the advice that we need to go. I always uh, think of this idea that maybe you can do insurance policy, maybe you can do uh, federal policy. EFF has got so many members who are poor and when they die, but we are not in the business of business. Mm -hmm. We are in the business of politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just see us being sidetracked by such things. Uh, and And then it appears like we are here for the monies. And that's why we're very skeptical. But I can tell you that, you know, by just looking at how we conduct our affairs, Mm. you will have an idea what kind of government is coming Mm. into power. We own the building that we are in, Winnie Zara Mandela House. We're not renting it. Mm. We're owning it. Mm. It's an EFF property. We've got studios, state-of-the-art podcast, television, radio, everything of the EFF. Every kind of event we put together, you'll realize it's run with some sense of professionalism of people who know what is expected from them. And then when we go to intervene in building people houses, one day, two day, because we don't have money, but we try and make a contribution and then go and renovate old age home, orphanages, Walk into those areas where the EFF has touched. You'll be able to see the kind of government uh, we will we'll expect when we, we take over in 2024. Mm. So, well, the TG will have to deal with that of the business of business because I agree, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, the EFF, but it has to be our own black-owned uh, you know, uh, business opportunities and economic opportunities that we should support and build even if we are not mm. uh, in government. And we try to do that. Uh, you know, we support a lot of business. When we're in Moses Mabida now, mm. we went to hire 20 catering companies that were black owned and majority of them led by Africans because we try by all means to empower our own uh, people. So uh, it's an idea that we, we, we can discuss in the EFF. We are, we are open to it, but a, a business I know what it can do to an organization. I mean, look at Chancellor House got corrupted, messed up Midupi, and everywhere else they put their hand. So uh, there was another one of the NC called Tebe, and uh, in the process people hijack them for their own individual benefits remember i established an eff company now we do business of the eff i must leave at some point and i must leave those things there and then the organizational memory disappears and people say no but this is mine and then it goes and benefit uh, a family so 
I don't know. The TG will be able to, to, to advise us whether we should get involved in business, but I'm not keen. Hello? Hello, hello, welcome. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to ask uh, the president. Hello, president. Hello, the guy. Hello, the guy. How are you? How are you? President, I've read the, the manifesto and I can tell you the changes of our government is very high. Ne? Mm-hmm. And my question that I want to ask is that if I'm a person with disabilities and hey, to be honest, we have been sat like on the government side on the term to talk opportunities. This legislation, uh, this legislation uh, that are already there are not being enforced on on the government department. We've been applying, but then we don't get uh, those opportunities. Even our targets are not, made, are not even met from municipalities to, to private to government. So what is the solution to us people uh, with disabilities that can benefit by also being Thank you very much. Um, I, I think the issue of uh, people living with disabilities is very important and very central uh, to the EFF. One of the things I always ask is, why can't we build in one year houses for people with disability? Because we've got their stats. Some of them have been on the grants. And there are not too many that there shouldn't be a disabled person without a house mm-hmm. that is conducive to their conditions. Mm-hmm. Why, if you can't take care of such few people mm-hmm. who've got these challenges, what about this big nation if you can't take the care of the most basic things? And then the second thing should be that there shouldn't be any government building which is not accessible mm-hmm. to the disabled people and including in, at a municipal level and anywhere else, the service is provided directly to the public, people who can use a sign language. There should be someone who gets employed, whether the sign language person comes today or not, but we should know when the sign language person comes, we know who to call on mm. to come and intervene. There shouldn't be any office, including Kaya FM, where we say there is no a disabled person who can broadcast. They, they, there are many of them. It must be a deliberate decision that in every sphere of the economy, the same way we are now fighting for women that 50% or more mm-hmm. must come in, we ought to have a policy that now puts a percentage that people with disability must be accommodated at this level. You do it, including in business. When you give an account, and it must be an audit query, uh, when you do an account of how much you have spent, where and how, the question should also follow, of these people, how many disabled people did you empower, both in procurement, in employment, and otherwise. We do that. We, we, there are not too many. We'll, be, we'll, we'll take care of almost all of them. Dolo, uh, I think I see you back, and it is Dolo, right? Thank you so much for calling. Yes. You're in Pretoria. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Madam uh, I just want to ask um, in relation to foreign uh, policy. Mm. Uh, you know, people come to our country under under the auspice of uh, asylum seeking. They open spaza shops, sell fake goods to our vulnerable communities. What is the EFF stance in relation to that? Okay, thanks, Dolo. Nice and short. Well, um, we don't agree with uh, fake and expired food. That's the bottom line. And we, as the EFF, from time to time at the branch level, we go visit the shops to check the expiry dates and all of that. My problem is that we now associate uh, fake uh, food and expired food exclusively to those ones who are found in the villages 
and in the township as if those are the people who can sell such things and spa i said this publicly many times they've never challenged me spa sells expired food but because it's white owned no one speaks about that it's like no expired food is associated with these ones and all of that south africa has got a right to protect its own economy including small businesses and all of that we must not avail our own properties to these people and then complain after that these people have come to open spaza shops because none of these people has forced anyone actually in front of my grandmother's house one of them is there he was in a shop that we grew up that shop was there then i don't know what happened they fought then he went next door if you look at the design of their shops are the same and the color they are colorful and and people say oh, these people come here and do this but my question is you guys give them the space to do what they are doing mm. and then you come back to complain our foreign policy especially with the african continent is that this continent is one it has always been one and you can't say i don't like apartheid i don't like colonialism but i support borders the borders were imposed on us by the colonialist during the scramble for africa and therefore in undoing the work of colonialism the borders have to be done away with and you can't say when you do away with the borders these people are going to come into south africa because they are starving where they are we are starving in limpopo there is no border between us and gauteng but we have not left our homes there and the limpopo is 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 peoplesless because they went to Gauteng where there are resources and because there is no border they are flocking there no no one will ever abandon their countries to come here all we are doing is my sister if you want to go to Nigeria to go and try some business opportunities or anything of that sort wake up in the morning and go why are the europeans allowed to do it they eat breakfast in milan in italy and go and sleep in paris without a hassle and we are not allowed because the unity of africa is a threat to certain people mm. there is no um uh, and and i say this all the time they say no this foreigners take our jobs and and all of that i say if we find a foreigner working here at kaya fm he didn't employ himself he was employed by the bosses here so you cannot fight this one you have to fight the bosses that we must be given a preference which we agree with mm. but let's not allow them to make us fight amongst ourselves because they enjoy that they hire foreigners and then they come to you and say you you can't get jobs because foreigners have taken jobs all over but who employs these people is the same people who are saying foreigners have taken jobs Mr. Malema, let's talk about the elections, the upcoming yeah. elections. Um, of course, you would like to win 50 yeah. plus one. Of course, that's what you would like to mm-hmm. get. Um, many say the same thing. No poll says that there will be one majority. That's not to say polls are always right. That's mm-hmm. not to say that. But what would be your second best option? What would be the best case scenario outside of winning the majority? Well, the best option is that you go into a coalition. Yes. So once the voters don't give anyone a decisive majority, mm-hmm. they are saying to you, it's a loud whispering, you guys have to work together. Mm. So we have to navigate it through principles. Mm-hmm. And not only principles, but the kind of leadership mm-hmm. and leadership you are bringing to the fore. Mm. And I was giving an example this morning that if I had to bring in Lozi and say, we go into coalition with the ANC in Gauteng, we want premiership, yes, in Glossy. Mm. The NC says, we want premiership, yes, Lisufi. Mm-hmm. And then I leave it to you, the voters, and say, okay, look at the two. Nowhere does Lisufi come close, not only in looks, in everything, in all <laughs> respect, close to Ndlozi. He's, you know, Ndlozi is one guy who was favored by God. He's got the brains, he's got, the lady says he's got the looks, I don't know that. And then he's got humility, He's got a voice to see. I've never seen everything in one person. That's the kind of people who are giving you. And you will have to make a decision. But the good, the, the other thing which 
every time people say, oh, Lucy, they jump to me. So I, I know there's going to be the last statement which is going to be made. They say, but you are too short. Get him. <laughs> that's, that's very important. So now that, that, so I bring this and then you bring Banyaz who goes around faking jobs, faking letters, creating an impression, is giving people jobs and calling people. Even apart, they never did that. Will come and collect your appointment letter. Come and display your poverty at Orlando Stadium, and then we must give you a letter that from now onwards you are employed. When I made that application for my dignity, mm -hmm. I did it alone. I was not in a stadium. You gave me an email address. I made my application. Gave me the address. I put in the envelope. I came there. So now, why must I be announced? So you speak of principles yes. guiding how yes. you're going to negotiate. Yes. Let us say in the event that you get very close, very mm -hmm. close, and the ANC says, look, let's talk. You know, you've said yourself, you know, in politics, no friends forever, we talk to no everyone. enemies forever. You know, these we, things we can talk, be negotiated. We right? talk to everyone. We talk to DA. And they, I'll, and, and, I'll and come and to they that refuses. scenario. I'll mm -hmm. come to that. Mm -hmm. You are, for now, the enemy number one, but mm. maybe it won't be for long. Absolutely, Who knows? Yeah. Politics. Yeah. In the scenario where the ANC does come and say, let's talk after the elections, let's talk, we can mm -hmm. do this, right? And their candidate remains Cyril Ramaphosa as the president. Would that be a deal breaker for you? Absolutely. I, I, Cyril, 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 you know, you guys must get someone who, with courage to just do a documentary about Cyril. Um, Cyril didn't attend Mandela's inauguration because he was angry at Nelson for not putting him as a deputy president. Because the Oppenheimers have been touting him that he will be Mandela's deputy president. He, the Cyril has been uh, uh, self-seeking and he has been saving the, the Oppenheimer and the Minel family and all of them with loyalty, not now. From the 70s, from the 70s, Cyril has been working with these people. Cyril went to establish a new a NUM, a union of mine workers without being a mine worker. Cyril has never been a mine worker. Cyril has never been underground a mine. He went to school to do law. When he came back, he served as a legal officer in the Oppenheimer family. Then there was a commission of uh, investigating black workers' conditions or something like that, which came with recommendation that unions of black workers must be recognized. Upon realizing the Oppenheimers that now these people are going to be recognized, they're going to cause a problem, sponsored the formation of the NUM. For some reason, he found himself in the UDF, then in the reception committee of Nelson Mandela. So when Mandela walks out of Polsmo prison, you must look at that video. You don't know whether Cyril is a bodyguard or what, but he's there I, giving the car direction. By the wall, is the one who's holding the mic. This guy is infiltrating Nelson. When Nelson arrives, sleeps one night in Soweto, and then comes back to, jo I mean, comes to Johannesburg. With which money? From where? And then he stays in the Minel's family house. Now, the Minel are one of the big mining uh, families in South Africa. So when you say he stayed in Minel's family house, you're thinking, oh, maybe it's a complex. Uh -uh. Same house. He meets Minel's children on the passage wearing gowns. Minel's child, when Mandela passed on, said, yo, we used to see the names we see on TV at our house because these people used to come there and meet Nelson. He moves from Minel. He goes to Sexen Hotel. He moves from Sexen Hotel. He goes to Houghton. We who have been working, we have now been to prison. When we buy houses ourselves, we get questioned, how can Mandela buy a house in Santi? Mandela bought a house in Houghton. With which money? Where did Mandela get a money to buy the house? This one, Cyril, was at the center of compromising Nelson. So if there is anything that white establishment and the Oppenheimers in particular have on us, is Cyril Ramaphosa. So then, would Paul Mashatila be a better candidate for you? Well, it's not a better candidate. Um, it is More the acceptable? It, 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 no, it is the ANC to make that decision. But Cyril 
relationship to what we have now as a country, as a problem. He's deep rooted into it. The Oppenheimers are forming a political party every day in South Africa just to upset the system because in their reading of situation, they like the EFF is going to emerge and pass the DA and merged with the ANC. They've got a majority. It's undesirable. They write there uh, in their website that, no, this, this is not a, requ- it's not a desirable situation. So wh- what do we do? Let's fragment the, the black vote. What are the, the, the things that you look at in financing rice science? Because that guy has got no history of mobilization of anything except being an editor of a newspaper. You give such a person 50 million and you say, no, it's donation. It's not donation. It's a formation of a political party. And then there is a, that lady who was a, a speaker here in, in Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. Sarah. Anyway, Sanur is doing Sarah. We wake up in the morning, Sarah has got posters. Poster! Correct poster. It's very expensive. Where did she get the money? She was struggling here with us in Johannesburg. Then you've got her man, Masham, with no idea what he's doing. He gets given 15 million every 20 million all these monies of different political parties, including the DA, come from one family. And then this family just divided around their individual granddaughters, uh, uh, the daughters, and then they distribute it as if it's their individual money, but it's one family. Why? The Oppenheimers are the people who formed the political system in South Africa. Actually, the Oppenheimers were members of parliament when parliament started in South Africa. So this was designed by, all of this that we found was designed by them. Then they took a decision to get out and to do business. Now they feel they must still control the political space. At the center of that is Cyril. Whatever happens, Cyril must continue this. All the problems we had, Guptas and all of that, that's fine. Cyril wins to be a president of the ANC. Everybody who had a BEE deal, which has nothing to do with Zuma, has got nothing to do with Oppenheimers, on the basis of what you are bringing to the table, you have been accepted in whatever company you may think of. When this guy came, all those guys were were dismissed. Were dismissed. Today is very difficult to find a black African millionaire because if they had a stake in this coal company which was supplying uh, ESCOM with coal, they are taken out. Why? We don't need you. You've got the president. The president is on a speed dial. And then you want to subject us to that another five years of that suffering. And I don't understand why these guys don't take him on on the basis of facts. Because these people were there. They know the facts. Terra says we leave Tef Lop together. Mm. Le, le God. We go to join Steve Biko in the fight for freedom. Me and this guy were together in everything we're doing. There was a law of common purpose. We are arrested under the law of common purpose. Nah, alone. I'm found guilty, sent to Robben Island. And then this one goes home. And when he goes home, I discover he wrote a letter that I'm the one who instilled communist ideas. In his head. Cyril's father was a policeman. Mm. And when Cyril was in solitary confinement, the father had access to him. And in solitary confinement, it's precisely exactly that. No one must visit you. So we isolate you to break you. And there's no way you are in solitary confinement. Your father comes, he's a policeman. He says, tell them, my guy. You tell them, we walk home. I'm here. And that's the only person you hear. You don't hear any other alternative perspective. With our eyes open, this is the guy you must go into a coalition and say, no, we can sign. Uh, The ANC uh, will deal deal with it. I don't think it will be the right thing to do. Mm. Um, We we need to rescue South Africa from the Oppenheimers. All of this at the center of it is the Oppenheimers, and they have to be confronted about it because they will never 
allow the economy of this country to be in the hands of black people. I mean, we are told of Patrice Mutsipe, he's a very good brother of mine. But I've, I was asking someone the other day, Patrice Mutsipe is produced millionaire, or what billionaire, whatever. But I've been to many beautiful events where people are honored and all. I've never had a single black person say, I am what I am because of Patrice. He made me a millionaire. How can we make a billionaire African black person who knows our suffering and that person doesn't empower others? If he really has... I mean, Patrice has got a good heart. He's a good guy. He, he, you know, he supports our sports and all of that. With that kind of heart, there's no way this guy will not have taken this money and given to some of you to get empowered. He can't. He doesn't have that kind of money. He's sitting there as a comrade bourgeoisie who managed the affairs of the ruling elite. And we are being fooled that no, you've got your own, yeah, there's no problem. So the open IMS do exactly that to us, co-opt some amongst us and then put them there to create an impression. No, you are here. So uh, it's a deal breaker. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, Onika. Thanks for calling. Okay, thank you. Hello, Mr. Madeleine. Ma. Morning. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah. Uh, my question is, in, in South Africa, we've got the working class, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we've got some of us who are called the missing middle. We, 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 whereby we are somewhere in between. I do not qualify to get an RTB house and my salary is too little for me to get a, a, a bond house from the bank. Now, I, I want to know if, if I take my vote and give it to the EFF, how will the EFF help some of us who are, are, are stuck in that dilemma of being stuck with, with this being called the so-called the, the missing middle? And my, my second question is in regards to education. I've got kids here in the house. They're supposed to be going to varsity. They are unable to go to varsity. One is supposed to go and do her third year. She can't go. She's at NMU. When I'm sitting with her here during the day and we go to the uh, NMU website of Facebook, the EFF student command is the one that is in charge there. What I see there, I do not like. I'm not sure if you have seen it. Those kids, they go on trips. They went to Devon the last time. Right now, today, when I, I went to the page, they bought loads and loads of alcohol. They are busy partying. Whereas second year, third year, and fourth year students are stuck. They are not being registered. And it's fast with rejecting them. Thank you, May. Thank you, Onika. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, you can be rest assured, Mama, that if you bring those kids, um, where did she call from? Um, Springs. Springs. And I think maybe uh, the producers may be able to collect yes. her contact. Yeah. Those kids will go to school. And uh, the things you raised about the student command, if it is, uh, they will be followed up uh, tonight to ensure that uh, the things you are speaking about are dealt with decisively. We have in this year alone not helped less than 100,000 students who were qualifying academically mm -hmm. and their parents could not afford. Mm -hmm. And it is our business and it's the business of the student command to make sure that any qualifying student is not disallowed to enter uh, the premises because they are owing mm -hmm. or they don't have money to pay. We have resolved this in many universities where we are in charge. And the NUM, I'm happy it was brought to our attention. And I can tell you, Ma, those kids, uh, uh, they will go to school. The state bank I spoke about was uh, exactly to deal with uh, a missing middle. That you've got a missing middle. They don't qualify for NSFAS. They don't qualify for RDP. Uh, they are excluded. There has to be some financial institution that is that takes that into consideration mm -hmm. that these people have got an income and uh, their credit record shows that 
they are paying people. They don't have such history of not paying. And those who have a history of not paying, they have been rehabilitated and therefore they must be reintegrated into the economy. Mm. So the EFF, when we take over, mm-hmm. we're going to make sure that that state banks deals exactly with that, with the okay. missing middle. Let's talk a little bit about crime. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to talk about crime in this country. Uh, and I don't think money buys you safety anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we understand the relationship we now have with the police. It's not good. Mm-hmm. It's not good. We've seen how they sometimes treat people who are protesting and so on. Your suggestions in how you're going to manage, number one, just how the police themselves relate to us. Um, and on secondly, the, the element of crime. Well, uh, the police, okay, the, the role of the police is not to prevent crime. Yes. is to come after crime has been committed. So we need to empower our people economically and give them jobs and get them into education and give them sports facilities. Because most of these kids, you say to them, why are you on Nyaupe? Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, Rodman, give us an alternative. Where can we go? Because like she was saying, I was supposed to go back to school. They excluded me on the basis of finance. Mm -hmm. I went to look for a job. If I'm not politically connected, I can't get employment. So I've got no any other option to smoke nyope, and there's no money to buy nyope. Now you must go and steal and uh, buy nyope. So we need to empower people. And secondly, we need to have uh, the category of crimes that you can pardon. Mm. So when you point a policeman with a firearm, you must go to jail for a very long time. When you kill a law enforcement officer, you must go to jail, no pardon. Because, no pardon, because we believe once we protect the police, they too will feel, because who protect the people who are protecting us? We, as government and the communities, need to protect the police. But police don't get rewarded. Mm -hmm. Now, we are told, a minister is going to announce, make big announcement on a big case and all of that. The police who have made those inroads, will they get a bonus? Because this was a big case, complicated case, so that you inspire more other police to go and do the right thing. The other thing is that crime intelligence no longer pays informers. You go and report. You know, there was a gangster that was shot. Uh, in 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 vendor in Loistrisha if not Toyando, mm. in some big mansion, a lot of guys inside there planning cash in transit haste. Three weeks before that, they were cash in transit in vendor everywhere. Someone went to inform the police that these people are doing this. This is where they are. We go and kill such dangerous criminals, and give the person who saved the country multi millions. 500 rand mm. as an informer. How are these people going to now keep us informed of these criminal activities? Mm. We need to reward people who report criminals and that leads to a successful a prosecution or arrest and we need to reward equally investigating officers because the other thing is we arrest and all the investigating officer messes up the case through investigation. And then they say there's no enough evidence. Mm. So we need to reward that. We need to reward the prosecutors who successfully prosecute complicated criminal activities. Mm. And through that, we know that these people will be uh, uh, motivated. So, but the last point I need to make is that we should not have police who are scared to kill dangerous criminals. Mm. That police who are scared of criminals, like So if police are scared of criminals, what about us? Police must know and must tell a criminal, you try nonsense with us. You are going to meet your maker tonight. So we can't have police that are delivering roses. It's not the job of the police to criminals. Police must shoot to kill hardcore dangerous criminals. So people know in a literal sense, Mm -hmm. crime doesn't pay. Why are we no longer having a police visibility on the off ramps and on ramps. There is a year where there was huge political, I mean, a police visibility in the whole of Houting, where we went one December without one case in transit, mm-hmm. 
and without a, 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 a mall being robbed. Because every turn we saw police, all of us are going to leave now to our homes mm -hmm. after this show. I can guarantee you, you are going to arrive home without seeing a single police vehicle on the road. A quick question around foreign policy and whether you support the reform of the UN Security Council. Absolutely. It's a... Um, Oh, that structure has been there for quite some time and the world has evolved over a period of time. Mm. And uh, if that is the case to have these guys who are permanent members of the Security Council because of what happened post the World War II, but there's been this huge development which include decolonization of Africa and doing away with apartheid and liberation of African countries, so when that security council was formed in that way we were under these people who are in the security council now we are on our own why can't we get ourselves a permanent seat uh, in the security council but no one must have the veto powers the, it must be a decision of the majority that's how democracy work this thing that we take a decision that there must be ceasefire in palestine and a, a, a security council follows through, America goes and veto mm -hmm. the decision of the majority. Mm -hmm. It renders that institution useless. Mm -hmm. The simplest principle on such aspect is majority rule. Let Africa be permanent in the security council and let the decisions of the security council be based on majority rule. The EFF has been gaining some momentum in the continent. What's mm -hmm. your plan in the continent as the EFF? We want one Africa, mm -hmm. one president, one parliament, one military command center, one currency that will be based on our minerals uh, as the African continent. Ourselves and Zimbabwe alone account for not less than 85% of the world platinum. Imagine we become one thing and we hold our platinum and say we're determining the price now like they do with the oil, those who have the oils, the Arabs and all of that. Although their oil is based on dollar, but they are benefiting out of it and they've developed their countries based on their natural resources. So we need one Africa and we must speak in one voice. That's how the Security Council is going to respect us. That's how China is going to respect us. How can Swaziland go and negotiate with China and say we are equal to China? Swaziland, Lesotho, Botswana, on the base of one. Size matters in politics and the more we come together, the more the world will respect us. The EFF is, is suggesting that there must be a constitutional review and that you're saying you need to remove the powers of the president for laws to be passed in parliament. Explain that. No, we, we want to amend the powers of the president amongst others. Why should the president appoint a, a public prosecutor and DPP, National Director of Public Prosecution? Bato is appointed by Cyril. Cyril is found with dollars under the mattress. He says, no, it was a trade. He even produces invoices. So that's fine. But no one is allowed in South Africa to trade with foreign currency. Not even diamond walk. Imagine a farm in Vila Vila. Diamond walk. You can't go there with a dollar and buy anything. Not in South Africa. So, all of that is in the open. But the person who appointed you, now you must arrest that person. So, parliament must appoint NDPP. And the laws must be initiated and finalized by parliament and not wait for the executive. And we need to amend section 25 of the constitution to make expropriation of land without compensation explicit. They say, no, the law as is, is clear. Okay, no problem. If it's clear, let's make it more explicit. They don't want because they know that law doesn't allow expropriation without compensation. You, you're you concerned about, this is not new for you, mm. you're concerned about the independence of the judiciary? Absolutely. Just expand on that. You know, I know what the judiciary can do. You know, I was rescued, I was, I was politically persecuted and I was rescued by an independent uh, judiciary. Those men and women in the Pretoria North refuse to be co-opted into a political agenda to pursue a certain individual. We cannot have that. And unfortunately, the Chief Justice has compromised this judiciary. And he has become part of the dinner table and he's saving uh, the president. So we can't have a section like the Western Cape High Court wanting to behave like exactly what those people want to do, as if they are not part 
of what we are trying to do and they are anti anything uh, transformation so we need how, how an independent the judiciary chief justice compromised um, huh? How has the chief? You are speaking about the chief justice. I want you to expand. On you the know, chief the justice. chief justice got two votes when we were appointing a chief justice. He got two votes. They were appointing a chief justice. He got two votes. They brought. 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 They They brought. They brought. They brought. They brought. They and that position is seven years. And Maya was going to give us uninterrupted seven years. Mm -hmm. We said to him, why are you doing the things you are doing? Because you know you are leaving. He said, no, I'm coming in. I'm going to change the judiciary. He's leaving now. He hasn't changed anything except to call press conferences and be in the public and enjoy meetings with the president. He never missed an opportunity to engage the president and be with the president. And as a result, we are unable to see because it's not only done, it must be seen as an independent judiciary. What does he do? He takes Zuma to court and then they take Zuma to jail on non-existing laws that Zuma is going to jail on contempt of court on civil matter without a trial, without listening to what Zuma did. We don't care whether we agree with Zuma or not. But we, you must stop it there at Zuma. If you don't stop it, there, Zuma is coming to us. And that is the compromise. The Zuma matter was a fundamental compromise of the independence of our judiciary. But I'm happy now. He has nominated Maya. Mm -hmm. And we hope that she will restore the good image of the judiciary. We need... I know what those guys can do. When when they are informed and they, they follow the law, not the political dynamics, and those guys know what they are doing. Our country needs that, especially at the moment where we are now. I want a caller to have the last word. Oh, Mandisa, um, you, are you calling from Ireland, as an island the country? Yes. Hi, yes. W welcome. Go ahead, go ahead, Mandisa. Hello, my name is Mandisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who were my president? Hello, Mandisa. Uh, <laughs> uh, president, I have two questions only. President, I'm from the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. the most useless province in South Africa, led by a baby doll. My question is, uh, President, is in South Africa, in the Eastern Cape, the first black, I mean, in South Africa, the first black president is coming from the Eastern Cape. The second black president is coming from the Eastern Cape. The mother of the nation is coming from the Eastern Cape. Combat Christian is coming from the Eastern Cape, but we don't have nothing to show. So my question is, when you take over after the 29th of May, in Arizona, it plans to go the Eastern Cape, the tourist province. And second thing, my province and uh, my president, uh, the favorite president <laughs> in South Africa. So, um, you see the killings that you talk about in Bosnia, Natal, and the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. That's what is happening, my my president in the Eastern Cape. So, I just want to know again when you take over. How you're gonna handle the crime in the villages? In the villages, my leader. Thank you. Well, um, I, I always, I don't know if it was a curse to the people of Eastern Cape because they gave us the best as a country, not only post 1994, even before. Before. Okay. Um, and uh, 1994 comes. And then Eastern Cape just becomes a rotten place. Um, no development at all. Um, and uh, you want uh, mud schools, you go to Eastern Cape. You want pit toilets, you go to the Eastern Cape. You want a place where you're going to drive for more than two hours without a tar road, you go to the Eastern Cape. So it's just a mess. Uh, and uh, you remember when... Uh, uh, this guy who was trying to be president of the ANC from KZ and um, Zuelum Kize went to launch scooter ambulances 
in the eastern cape where there are no roads mm. imagine you are in an ambulance it goes like this and you are sick it's bumpy mm. so you can see it has become a playground we owe the people of eastern cape a huge apology and recommit ourselves to do what our forefathers said we'll do to them develop that place to be the best of the best provinces it has got a potential why is east london not a topical city like Deben and Cape Town because it has got almost the same natural uh, resources as the others. Because what makes a city is two things. It's natural resources, mountains, rivers, a sea and all of that. And then the mineral resources. Houting didn't have that, but it had gold. That's why it became what it is. So it's important that the people of Eastern Cape get a priority. It's a playground that place where a premier fakes masters and then they is get is taken to court they, you know SIU says we're going to investigate you your masters is fake then he interdicts an investigation I mean if you come to me now and say my honors is fake I, I don't have to say anything I never I never honored myself I was honored by the university. I didn't give myself an honors. I don't have to respond. The university must respond. Because once you say his honors is fake, you are saying the university is engaged in corrupt activities. The university never defended the premier. Because they knew they never issued such a masters. So it's a playground for wrongdoing. And you know what is painful is that the people of Eastern Cape continue to vote for those people in huge numbers. And uh, this time around, we have to make sure we do a real work in the Eastern Cape. KZN killings. You know, the, the biggest problem of KZN and its killings mm. is access to guns. Mm -hmm. Now, the guns were sent to KZN by the apartheid regime. Yes. You see the way the trucks are queuing to Richards Bay mm. to take coal. Mm -hmm. There were trucks, trucks queuing like that, yeah. sending weapons mm -hmm. into the uh, KZN. Mm. Those weapons were never recovered. That's it, yeah. Yeah, so they have access to firearms with ease. Mm -hmm. um, in Sishu, we don't have access to firearms. If mm -hmm. The biggest weapon we have is Okapi or something. will stab you, what, what, but... Firearm, we've never seen. We, we, mm. No one has ever claimed to know guns. Yeah. Because it was a deliberate military action. Mm. How do you resolve it? You need to resolve it militarily. We need to get the army into a KZN unannounced national search day. The army, the police, we attack it. We get into houses, Indian, white, colored, African, we don't care. We look for this. Why? Mandela said, throw them into the sea. Not a single gun was thrown no. into the sea. No. We will never resolve that killing in case that, and if there is no military operation mm -hmm. to go and recover those guns. But lastly, because this were procured by apartheid government, mm -hmm. the South African National Defense Force somehow should be having receipts of what kind of armaments were sent mm -hmm. into KZN? Mm. And these guns, they were not only given to the IFP. The ANC was a killer the same way as the IFP. Not, 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 not one of them will claim to be more peaceful than the uh, uh, They were killed, they killed. Then they retreated, gave the hostels mm. the firearms. We need to go and raid that in the hostels and recover these firearms. Because in the hostels, they don't do it the way. They don't kill each other mm. in the hostels. Mm. But they get procured to go and kill other people. Mm. They are called in mm. They are taken from a hostel to go and kill other. When access to firearms that were put amongst our people by the apartheid government, it's a source of killing in KZ and, and can be resolved militarily because it was a military action. Mr. Malema, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much.